Adding and subtracting rational functions. Okay, whenever we add and subtract fractions, we always need to have common denominators. So looking at our first problem here, we have common denominator of 8v and 8v. So we can combine the top row. So I'm going to combine my like terms, 6u and 1u, combine to make 7u, and negative 1v and negative 3v makes negative 4v. On the bottom, I just put 8v, because that was my common denominator. For this next problem, we have common denominators as well, so I'm just going to combine the top like terms. So I have 5a plus 6, 5 plus 1 is 6, all over a squared plus 3a plus 2. Now, if I can simplify this further, I would need to. So let's see what a squared plus 3a plus 2 factors to. So multiplies to 2 and adds to 3. That would be 2 and 1. So it's a plus 1 and a plus 2. I can't factor 5a plus 6. I can't pull out a GCF or anything, so this is just my final answer. But you always want to make sure you factored everything completely in case something does cancel out. Okay, on this next one, we do not have common denominators, and we need to make common denominators. So generally what we do whenever we need common denominators is we just multiply them together. So I'm going to make my common denominator be 4 times x minus 1. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to multiply my first fraction, top and bottom, by 4. Multiply my second fraction, top and bottom, by x minus 1. So if I rewrite this, I have 24 over 4x minus 1. No need to distribute that in. Minus 5x times x minus 1 over 4 times x minus 1. Okay, so now I have common denominators. I do need to go ahead and distribute this because I need to be able to combine like terms. So on the top, I'm going to have 24. So I'm distributing here the 5x, so I would get 5x squared minus 5x. But I also have this negative to distribute. So it's going to be negative 5x squared plus 5x, because it's a minus a negative 5x. Okay, in the end, I'm just going to put this in the correct form, standard form, so x squared goes first, then x, then 24. And there's my final answer. A little bit ugly, but my final answer. All right, next problem. Same thing, we need like denominators. So I'm going to multiply the left fraction, top and bottom, by x minus 8, and the right fraction, top and bottom, by x plus 7. So here, my common denominator is going to be x minus 8, x plus 7. No need to, fact to foil it out. Then, I need to multiply 3 times x minus 8. I'm just distributing the 3 to everything on the inside. So it becomes 3x minus 24, and then plus 4x plus 28, because I'm distributing that 4 in as well. Now, if I combine like terms, I have 7x plus 4, negative 24 plus 28 is 4, all over x minus 8, x plus 7. Now I need to check and see if I can factor that top part at all. I can't. Nothing, no common factor comes out between 7 and 4, so this is just my final answer. Okay, next one. I can't factor the denominators any. I can't pull anything out between 3 in and 8. So I'm going to need to do the same thing I did last time. Multiply top and bottom by 3 and minus 8 and top and bottom by n minus 5. Okay, so my common denominator here is going to be 3n minus 8 times n minus 5. And then my numerator, if I distribute this 3, I'm going to get 9n minus 24 plus 6n minus 30. I distributed the 6 here to everything. Okay, combining like terms on the top, I get 15n minus 54 
all over 3n minus 8 times n minus 5. Okay, now I need to see if I can simplify anything further. On the top, I can factor 15n minus 54. I can pull out a common factor of 3. So I get 5n minus 18. I don't see any common factors that cancel out here, so this is just my final answer. This next problem is going to work the same way. I'm going to multiply top and bottom by n plus 5 and top and bottom by 2n plus 6. It looks like here with the 2n plus 6, I could have pulled out a factor of 2. I'm actually going to do that first. So here, if I pull out a factor of 2 first, this will just make our problem a little bit easier. I can then simplify between this 4n and the 2. So my first fraction stays the same. And then I'm going to divide both 4 and 2 by 2, so I get n over n plus 3. So it still have the same kind of problem going on, it just makes it a little bit easier with smaller numbers. So now I'm going to multiply the left fraction by n plus 3 on the top and bottom, and the right fraction by n plus 5 on the top and bottom. So my common denominator is n plus 5, n plus 3. On the top, I get 5n plus 15 plus n squared plus 5n. Okay, now to combine like terms. Okay, now I need to look at the top quadratic I have and see if I can factor it because maybe some factors will cancel out with the bottom. So I'm looking to see what multiplies to 15 and what adds to 10. Well, the only factors that multiply to 15 are 1 and 15, or 3 and 5, and none of those add to 10. So this is just my final answer. Okay, so whenever we start seeing quadratics in here, the first thing we're going to want to do is factor those, because it might make our denominator easier. So I'm just going to rewrite the first fraction. And then if I look at the top of the next one, what multiplies to negative 4 and adds to positive 4. Since we don't have any factors for the top quadratic, we are unable to factor that out. So we're just going to leave it as x squared plus 4x minus 4. On the bottom, we have what multiplies to negative 12 and adds to 4. Well, that would be positive 6 and negative 2. Okay, so now we can see that my common denominator is just going to be x plus 6, x minus 2. The only thing that the fraction on the left side is missing is that x plus 6. So I'm going to multiply the left one, top and bottom, by x plus 6. So in the end, my whole common denominator is x plus 6, x minus 2. For the top, I'm going to need to multiply together x plus 6 and x minus 1. So I'll do that out here to the side really quick, if you forgot how to do that. So we're just foiling. x times x is x squared. x times negative 1 is negative x. 6 times x is 6x. And 6 times negative 1 is negative 6. Combining my two middle terms gives me x squared plus 5x minus 6. Okay, and then I have a subtraction sign here, so I'm going to need to distribute that to everything on the second numerator. So I have minus x squared minus 4x plus 4. Okay, so let's start looking for like terms to combine in the numerator. I see that my negative x squared and x squared cancel out. 5x and negative 4x combine to make x, and negative 6 and 4 combine to make negative 2. And again, that's all over x plus 6, x minus 2. So here we see that we have two common factors, top and bottom of x minus 2. We can cancel those out. 
our final answer is 1 over x plus 6. Okay, now we just have kind of a longer problem because now I'm adding and subtracting three fractions together. So the first thing I'm going to do is see if I can factor anything. The first two fraction, there's not, fractions, there's nothing to factor. I cannot factor the numerator of the second fraction. The bottom I can, though. So I'm going to replace x squared minus x minus 2 with x minus 2, x plus 1. Because negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1, and negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. So now I see that this is going to be my common denominator. This first fraction, I'm going to need to multiply the top and bottom by x minus 2. And the second fraction, I will need to multiply top and bottom by x plus 1. Okay, so in the end, my common denominator will be x minus 2, x plus 1. So for that first fraction, x minus 2 times 1, well, that's just going to be x minus 2. For the second fraction, I have x plus 1 times x. Don't forget this minus sign, though. I'm going to put the minus, and I'm going to put the rest of that in parentheses. So I have x squared plus x, and then plus x squared plus 2 from my third numerator. Okay, so distributing my negative here gives me x minus 2 minus x squared minus x plus x squared plus 2 all over again my common denominator. Okay, so now I need to start looking for like terms. I see that my x squareds will cancel out. My x's will also cancel out. And my 2's cancel out. So, having all of this on the top added to 0, I now have 0 divided by my numerator. 0 divided by anything is just 0.